Ms. Payne, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Chris will salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is move up number 10 on the agenda, cafe services, to number one. You're out. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Garrow. I'm the district manager for cafe services. Um, I'll give you a little bit of just a background about the company and pretty much just then open it up for questions and answers. Um, to some good and going to the show you guys um, Cafe Services is a food service management company that was started in London, New Hampshire about 17 years ago by um, Brian Stone. Um, since then, we went from one school district, which was run by our uh, Vice President Bill Van Zandt, and about 10 camps, to having 40 school districts throughout New Hampshire and Vermont, um, 40 BNI accounts, which are corporate dining accounts. Road New England into Delaware and about 30 residents. Um, I work for the school division, which is you know, primarily our division in this area of the country. Um, most of Brian's family now works with us. It is still a family business and still very needed to the New Hampshire community. Um, we're very active in all kinds of different things like responding to school. Um, well, there are some new regulations coming up, all that kind of stuff. And where we offer a full package of management for your uh, food are some samples of some of the uh, types of stuff we do <laughs> in our cafeteria. <laughs> um, because we're food service guys, we don't like to show up without empty handed so. Um, unfortunately, I. Didn't break quite as much as I normally would. Uh, we had oh. well, who's not eating? Little wolf out there. <laughs> well, we're gonna feed you. Don't worry. Okay. Um, Chris, you want to take it away? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you may have some questions about um, building participation, that kind of thing. Uh, there's lots of different ways we work with different items to build participation. Um, this is actually a salad that um, was made at a school today for service in a school. Part of our Market Fresh program. Um, lots of grab-and-go salads we find help to increase participation with kids. Also, make sure that they're getting a complete meal by having the full reimbursable meal package right there. These are also a part of the Market Fresh program, fruit and yogurt parfaits. Um, these are extremely popular in a lot of places. Um, again, you know, that qualifies as a reimbursable meal. We market it with a breadstick with it as well. Um, and again, a nice, easy grab-and-go reimbursable meal for kids. We also do grab-and-go sandwiches as well as made-to-order delis, depending on the setup of each school district. These are a couple of setups that would be... Um, for a typical school that wouldn't have a made-to-order deli, um, where we package it up, again, as a reimbursable meal, so kids can grab it and go. Um, in the location where we do have enough room to do a made-to-order deli or the lunch schedule allows it, we do a made-to-order deli just like you would see at Subway. And I think um, a couple of the ladies who have toured some of the schools saw exactly that in action. Some other items that we do to build participation, build program sales, um, and still kind of really get into the health and wellness aspect of it, is alternative types of a la carte items, of snack items. Instead of just packaged items and that kind of stuff, a lot of our kids in our school, school see these fruit salads, cheese and cracker snackers, um, items that, again, are a little more nutritious than your typical packaged snack, quick and easy for them to grab and go, things that are familiar to them. Mm. 
So does, it, does this all come in to the cafeteria in these containers already like this? Or nope, is this something that they're, they're making it on site? But None of the food is brought in off site. Everything is prepared on site. So even the sandwiches to go, you make those? Yeah, even the sandwiches to go are made by staff members at the school, um, usually, you know, maybe an hour before lunch, set up in whatever display we have, and they're ready for the kids when they come in. So I'm just going to distribute some of this around. Now, in the proposals that you've given us, are you are are we going to be a school that has the made to order deli if we do this? Is that part of our package? I or believe so. I'm not 100% sure on top of my head. I'd like to look in that package. I actually did um, what we call the walkthrough here. I was the one that, when we were preparing the RFP, came and took, took a look at your facilities. I can tell you, you have enough room for a made to order deli. I believe you have a little reconfiguration already the equipment to do the deli. Um, whether or not Bill Van Zandt, who's the Vice President, actually prepares the bids, um, put it in the proposal and put money in there for it, I'm not sure. So, Andrew, do you happen to know if he included that? I'm pretty sure he did. I believe so, yeah. <coughs> um, one of the things that I've discussed with a few of the board members on the tours is because of the size of the, and layout of your kitchen, um, I feel pretty confident, and I'm pretty sure that they'll put it in the proposal, that we'd actually be able to kind of tailor your program to the different age ranges. Um, a good example I've used is Plymouth Elementary, which is one of the schools that I oversee, where we serve K through eight, and K through four get the traditional, you know, hot meal, they'll have a sandwich option and a salad option. But then for five through eight, we're able to do more options like the made-to-order deli, more stuff on their salads than just one or two choices, and a lot of different stuff that they more see in the middle school, like some of you folks saw at Barrington Middle School. So, um, can I open it up for more questions? Or? Anybody yeah. have questions? You can dig in while I'm talking, or you can wait until <laughs> you. Oh, you were saying like the uh, the K through four, um, you feel that the kitchen is set up so they'd have a hot meal and they have a sandwich alternative. Yeah, typically what we like to do for the K through four programs, um, most of our elementary schools will run a hot entree, then also have sal salad and sandwich options. Mm -hmm. And depending on the setup of the school and what the school is ready for, you know that might be one sandwich option, one salad option, maybe a couple. Um, and really. You know, our programs are designed to kind of be customized to each building, each school we serve. Mm -hmm. And from there, it really kind of, where it goes is what the population of the school is looking for, what will work with the population, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, a good example, like I said, was Plymouth Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, Plymouth Elementary actually does their made-to-order deli for one per week. Even the first graders are able to use the made-to-order deli. Um, not going to work in every school. Sometimes you don't have the time. Um, sometimes the kids just don't catch on to being able to handle it at first grade because if you get a first grade of too many choices, they can be there for 20 minutes trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, some places it'll work, some places it wouldn't. Well, it would. We wouldn't start with a program like that here, but it, the program would grow with what is right for the school. So looking at the kitchen the way we have it set up, how, what would you feel that would fit I mean, what would you propose? You know, the way you're, the way with the amount of space you have on your line, mm -hmm. um, and kind of the traffic flow that is right now, um, for K uh, for five through eight, we can get into a lot more of the programs, like possibly the made to order deli, which I'm pretty sure is in there. Definitely the market fresh type of stuff. Um, could even get into the realm of doing some pizza options more than just once a week, like a lot of elementary programs. Um, and you know, and again, a lot of this stuff is geared towards the health and wellness end. Our pizzas are all done on a whole wheat crust with a low-fat part skin mozzarella. Um, and it's actually, when done right, it's a healthy meal and very popular. Mm -hmm. so and now these cups here with the veggies and the fruit, is this off at, is this off at every day? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how does that work with the, um, 
with the, the meals program for students? I mean, price-wise, I mean, certainly if kids come in and they don't like the hot meal, I mean, do do right. they know ahead of time what they can pick and choose? I mean, because mm -hmm. I can see them standing in line and wanting everything, but of course, right. they have and it all set up. Yeah, and you know, to, with the different changes and the different style of what we do, mm -hmm. there is student training involved as well as, you know, bringing in our programs, training other people, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'll give you a little preview of our program for next year with the um, changes in the meal regu in the meal patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what's called the Strive for Five program, which is basically a program that's based on my plate, put out by USDA mm -hmm. in, in place of the pyramid, that teaches kids not only what a full meal is based on my plate, but what a full meal is based on government reimbursement and that kind of stuff. We don't explain government reimbursement to them, right. <laughs> but we explain what the my plate is. We explain how it relates to good nutrition. We explain how um, their choices in the cafeteria relate to my plate. So I and it all ties into that meal. If I have a first grader come in, they don't like the hot meal. What would their what would their choice be? You know, I mean, they a would sandwich or a salad. Okay, so you're going to have them trying to pick. It depends on how your school is currently set up. Okay. Um, if the school is currently taking meal orders in the morning and sending down so they know how many kids are getting hot lunch or whatever, we go with that system. Um, if the administration feels their kids can handle making choices, we try that system. If the administration doesn't feel they can, we talk to them about implementing a system where they get orders in the morning, that kind of stuff. Again, you know, a lot of this stuff gets tailor-made to the school that we're in. Um, because every school that we go into, we find some stuff that works and some stuff that doesn't. The stuff that works, we're not just going to throw out the window. You know, we'll kind of pick it up from there, and if it needs to be improved, it'll be improved. If it's a great system, we'll leave it in place. Well, if there's no system in place, we'll put one in place. Having a choice is great. I'm just picturing a first grader who doesn't like a hot meal, and, and all right, I want one of those and one of those, and then now you've got all these kids in line, and, right. and it's very difficult to get them through and be right. able to get and lunch served within that time. Yep. Yeah. And again, you know, that's why it's all kind of tailor-made to each school, because we have some schools where we have first graders in the line making choices right there using their pen numbers. We have some schools where we get counts in the morning, we have little systems where we know the kids, what the kids are getting, so, because a lot of times they'll get down and they'll forget what they asked for. Um, and then, you know, they're rung in by roster system or pictures or whatever. It's all set up based on you know, conversations with the school, the okay. administrators, the teachers, and what they think is best for their kids. We start from there and, you know, customize the programs to fit the school. Do you, um, I notice on these sheets you have a lead cook, a cashier, mm -hmm. and general utility. So you're talking three employees? Um, yep. I well, mean, actually, Two at six and a half hours and one at three hours. I believe this, that particular one is talking about three employees plus a food service so Let me get the check there. So that's two food service, isn't it? Two food service. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that particular um, budget staffing proposal has the lead cook and the cashier at 6.5 hours each, a general utility person at three hours, and a food service director. Um, oh, okay. So that's a total of four employees. That general utility person was added, um, I believe, to do the floors. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so, that, so pr prior to tonight, we were looking at three people. Three people, that's right. The food service director, the lead cook, and the cashier, but we're asked to add um, maintenance of the floors in the the cafeteria to that, which is why the utility question was added. So you have three at six and a half and then at three. Mm -hmm. You didn't bring sure. a sample menu for them for a month or two, by any chance? Um, you know, I didn't bring any copies, but I do have one in this proposal book that I can pass around. I can copy it. Okay, great. The utility person was added because the original proposal bill thought that we had maintenance handled the cleaning of the cafeteria. So 
So he had to add the utility person later on because I told him the maintenance department doesn't handle the cleaning. That's why it was added later on. But I believe in the original proposal the utility person was in there in the book that I, in the book I gave out. Yes. So the utility staff, department already had the cleaning. The staffing yeah. didn't change from the original proposal. The utility you, person would only clean though, right? Is that all they do? Well, clean and if there's time, they would get, you know, help out the cashier and the other areas in the kitchen. Okay, so it's not just, okay. okay. Um, no, I didn't catch your name with that nice lady. is actually making some copies of the menu that's in the proposal. The menu that she's about to show you would be our menu for September okay. because it's included in the bid. That is the menu that we run for September. Um, so she's going to make you all copies of that. There's also here, and I'll just kind of put them around in piles on the table. You can look at them at your leisure. These are some sample menus from other schools that we do in the area. Uh, Molten Mill and Two Lakes. You're saying Plymouth is K-8? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How do you have a setup with the like, kindergarten and first grade? Did you have to change much? Do in terms like of the, as far as the style menu? of service with them, with yeah. the menu? Yeah. Um, style of service, you mean change much well, like, as, as it runs now or for one we went in? As it runs now. Um, how are we, you finding the K? I'm, I'm more concerned with the K-1, too, oh, is oh, being able to make choices and, breakfast? you know, I mean, yeah. they're, they're accustomed to doing things a certain way and kind of yellow. Right. And, you know, Plymouth, we're have it. Plymouth would be a little bit different example because that's actually, you know, in terms of an elementary school, that's a little more advanced. A good example of the kind of thing you're looking at here, even though it's not a K-8 range, sure. is uh, Idlehurst, our new school down in um, Summersworth. Mm -hmm. uh, they built a nice, brand new uh, elementary school that's K-5. through five. Um, and we went in there because this is something the kids were used to because of the way their buildings were set up. We went in there with that same kind of system where every morning the teachers ask if they're getting the hot meal, the sandwich, the salad, that kind of stuff. Okay. And we get that counted in. Uh, because the facility was designed to do more than that, we're gradually implementing choice. Um, right now, I don't think we've gone as far as the kindergartners and first graders yet. But now in that building for two through five, we don't get counts anymore. The kids come down, they choose the hot meal, the sandwiches, and the sandwiches. K and one, we still get the counts. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as we if play with it, we would experiment and see, you know, slowly, gradually see if the K and one kids could handle the choices. If they did, then we do choices. If they didn't, we do the counts. Okay. So, um, you know, that really. You know, as far as kindergartners and first grading, graders having a choice, we do this in a lot of places, We so we know how poorly that can go. <laughs> so, you know, we don't just jump into that without making sure it works. Yeah, I can just see Why is the food service manager listed twice? Thank you. That's the way food service one, food service two. I see this one. That's non public, though. That's that's no. That's no. I don't it's know what that is. That's what is this? That's the most recent copy um, would look like this. With the lead cook, cashier, and general utility person there, and the food service director there. Um, I do know that over the course of this process, uh, Bill and Andrew have worked up a few different staffing guides based on some different um, things that you folks might have wanted to do. But as of right now, this is the most current one that I have. Can I say what you have? Mm -hmm. Which one? It was the one you were referring to. So you can't. No. That's based on we're doing different scenarios for staffing. That's why it's for different um, staffing scenarios. That's why it's for non public. He's saying this one's the most current. This is going to be for yeah, that's what I handed out. So what's the food service one and food service two underneath that? That's what I just asked. That's what I want to discuss in non-public because it okay. involves okay. employees and salaries. Okay. okay. All right. Maybe I could ask just a really general question, all mm -hmm. right? So for years we've been running in a deficit in food service, you know, and um, so how can your company make such a big difference in um, 
in that for yeah, us. Absolutely. You know? So I think that's what we're trying to decide, you know, mm-hmm. running our own program versus outsourcing. Right. And so why would we want to outsource? You know, okay. maybe you could sure. just help us clarify right. that. On, uh, why would you have, want to outsource on the financial end? Right, um, that's what know, I'm asking. We're able to run most programs that we go into more efficiently and more profitably than they were before, one, because of the efficiencies that we bring. Okay. You know, because we work with 40 different school districts, um, you know, lots of years experience doing different school districts, mm-hmm. we bring efficiencies that a lot of times a standalone school district won't have. Right. Um, you know, that's a big part of my job as district manager okay. is working with different school districts and, you know, from everything to farm to school initiatives, wellness initiatives, and how the school actually operates, mm-hmm. bringing that experience that I've, over my the course of my five years working as a district manager, I've worked with 27 different school districts. Mm-hmm. I've seen everything done a lot of different ways. Right. And I've, you know, <coughs> gotten pretty good at looking at a situation and going, you know, they do this over in Mulford. I think if we yeah. do it here, it's going to make it much easier and more okay. efficient. So you get those efficiencies. You get the bulk of purchasing. Okay. Um, we purchase for a total of about a little over 100 businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we work with our purveyors, we work on a national account level. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're able to get better pricing than just one school that would work, right. you know, independently. Individually. So that's really, you know, those two plus increased participation through some of these programs that you see here mm-hmm. is really how we're able to make a program like yours more financially viable. Okay. okay. And I know that there are not lots of new regulations that are coming down from the federal government. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how you keep up to date on that. Sure. Um, I actually also serve as the compliance officer for the um, school division. Uh, And I take care of uh, when we have what's called the CRE, which is a coordinated review effort, which the state, right now they have to do it once every five years. They have to do Mm -hmm. once every three years starting next year. Um, But, you know, they come in and do an audit of every program. It's Mm -hmm. mandated by federal regulation, and I take care of all of those. Uh, But I also take care of our training for the new regulations which means I read lots and lots of legalese. Okay. Um, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010 was 220 pages, and I read every <laughs> single one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and you know, from there we do things like um, what I don't know if it's going to be made available to the general public or to just our clients, but um, I just finished a PowerPoint specifically geared towards school administrations and school boards mm-hmm. with a lot of the information you need to know about the um, Healthy Hunter Free Kids Act right. and what's coming up for changes for next year. And we're going to be turning that into a webinar and then putting it out to all of the school districts we work with. Hey, you know, okay. we're coming to do a presentation. We have some quick start guides you can look at. Mm-hmm. Or we have this webinar we can set you up with. Um, you know, so we do a lot to keep on top of the regulations but also work with the administrations, you know, somewhat school boards, but mainly the administrations right. to make sure they have all the information they need as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Does anyone else on the board have any questions? Okay, do you no, mind you answering know. questions from the uh, public? No, that's fine. Okay. Does anybody <laughs> have a question? <laughs> I've met you. Yes, I've met a couple Uh-oh. of times. <laughs> My question is, you said there's a food service director, a line cook, mm-hmm. a cashier, and was it three and a half or three? A uh, three hour generally. That three hour person or whatever, do they also help serve on the line or they just clean the cafeteria? Um, at this point in time, I can't answer that okay. for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I'm not quite sure what was worked out in terms of floor maintenance. I don't know how much of that time is dedicated to floor maintenance because I didn't work with that part of it. Um, but also, too, you know, again, like I said, as we get into a program, we structure it with what will work. So I can't, there's going to be a lot of those structure type questions that I can kind of answer in a general sense, but I can't really because I know some about the building, but not a lot. Not as much as you ladies do. Well, I don't you know, know what about mean? the questions, but right. um, what is usually charged for a lunch for each child? Uh, that is actually in the proposal, I believe, and it's set by the school board. Okay. Another question is, how much are they allowed, allowed to charge if they don't you know, have the money to buy it? Again, that's uh, set by school district policy. As a management company, we don't come in and dictate a lot. We don't come in and make any policies, that kind of stuff. We advise. We recommend. Um, and then from there, 
the school food authority, which would be these folks mm -hmm. in aggregate, make yeah. <laughs> they make the decisions, <laughs> and it's the management company's obligation to implement those decisions. You know? The people that are working are they contracted, or is it just? I believe in this like the situation, again, we've run it a bunch of different ways. I believe in this situation, those people would become cafe services employees, um, which would entitle you to all the benefits and rights that a cafe services employee has, um, such as our benefit programs and all of that. So. See, I've been here over 20 years, so this is kind of, to me, it's yes, no, iffy. I'm just, you know, you know no what I mean? part of it's yes, no, iffy. No, I mean, it's just like you have 23 years working in the cafeteria. It's it's totally different. It would be different. You know what I mean? It, it sounds it would like be, it's different, but it would I, don't be, know. I don't know. There would be some stuff that would be different, but you'd be amazed at how much it would be the same. Um, yeah. Because all right into place. In, in the end, I can tell you that right now, tomorrow, you're going to come in and you're going to serve kids lunch. Exactly this time, right? Exactly this time next year, you'd be coming in and serving kids lunch. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> just, you know, you know, there's going to be a few fringe details, but it's basically going to be the same thing. Part of the services as a cafe services employee includes unemployment payments in the summertime, does it mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. it 401k too, is that? 401k, unemployment benefits. Uh, benefits in summertime and on vacation time. That's for um, all the employees. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, as well as, you know, some other typical benefits, health insurance, life insurance for full-time employees, that kind of stuff. Uh, but also, too, one of the things that you get as a cafe service employee that you wouldn't get as a school employee is the opportunity to work summers if you want because we do residential camps, but also advancement opportunities. Um, I talked about we have Plymouth Elementary. Yeah. Uh, Plymouth School District has eight towns that each have their own uh, schools with food service stores. Um, so far, besides the two schools in Plymouth, we've picked up three of those towns. All three of the food service directors in those small room building school districts started as lead cooks at mm -hmm. one of our schools. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so for people that are looking for advancement opportunity, there's a lot more advancement opportunity. There's also, too, a lot more continuing education. Um, you know, with, when you're in a self-operated school district, these folks are busy, you know, running the school districts, focusing on what they need to do to educate kids. We're focused on feeding the kids. We're focused on making sure that you have the opportunity to participate in SNA stuff, which I know you do. Um, sometimes. Um, but also, too, all of our food service directors are um, SNA, what's called SNS Level 1 certified. Um, and we put them, you are too? Yeah, I just got it. Yeah. We, we hold those classes, we help them with it, we pay for it. Um, along with your sort of say, certification, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, food service directors are required to get it, it's available to any of our members. Um, so there's a lot more continuing education stuff like that plus seminars and that kind of stuff that we do, that's another I've done online courses. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, we do a lot of that stuff through SMA, we do a lot of our own stuff in-house yeah. too. Yeah. I, I was curious to know, um, for the students that get free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm. do they have the same options as the paying students? Yep, yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that uh, full-time employees get benefits. What sort of what Six and a half hours a day full time, or you have to be 40 hours a week, or I believe the cutoff on that is 37.5. I'm not sure there might be so that would be a lot of the things we It's really just health and uh, everything else. Yeah, because um, grapes. Uh, that's a salaried position, so you know. It, Probably would be more, you know, with that. Cheese, crackers. I stay longer than that. Also, you, you know, talk about the kids coming in and some signing up for okay. or some school you guys and signing up. How do you make them feel kind of safe? I mean, they have that excitement to do attendance and it takes the count and it comes back to us and then we have to do something. So don't want to sign up. Mm -hmm. so don't want to sign up. Yep. Sometimes okay. and, you know, in I can't say exactly how we would deal with it here, but it'd probably be fairly similar to what you do now. Um, you know, again, that's one of those things where it depends on the building, and there are some buildings where we get those counts, 
we know exactly how many make, we know how many kids are going to forget to order or change their mind, and we take care of that. Um, you know, we have some schools where, you know, the schools where we have nothing but choice, um, and we don't get a free order. Um, they rely heavily on their production records to make 